Hello Internet, I am Mamed El Mizwed and I will show you the different steps we made to create the crowd of the Dark Creators who chased Barbara in the first sequence of this tutorial. First, let's watch a game footage of Freeman Legend that we use as reference to analyze the motion and behavior of the little beasts. We can see here that the creatures always move together and are very compact. They rarely stand out of the group and if they do, they quickly come back in. We can see also that there is a kind of convective motion. We can see here, they always move in, um, in circle, you know, like uh, the caterpillars of a tank. Okay, how to do this in 3D? Here are the big steps. First, we start by animating simple, a simple placeholder of the crowd. Then we use this placeholder to, to contain the particle flow system. When the simulation is complete, we bake the animation of particles on Apple in order to have a lighter and quicker scene. Then we link an instance of a low version of an animated dark creators on these helpers. We had a few hard versions of keyframe animated dark creators in the foreground and of course the character of Barbara. And voila, we just need to hit F9. Okay, how did I design the process? How to keep the dark creatures in compact way during the shot. When I watch the references, I immediately think of the log bound operator in particle flow. This operator ensures that the particles remain together and are connected to a static or an animated surface. I will come back to it later. The first thing we have made is animate a mesh. This mesh in the, in the viewport, which looks like a soft body, that helps us to determine the volume of the crowd. This animated mesh is actually a, a simple sphere, as you, can, as you can see, that we put in motion with the Space Warp FFD box. I hide the, the set to be more clear and I hide the control. This um, up there, there is the, the FFD box. This uh, FFD box is skinned with shapes and, uh, and helpers as a bones. Uh, this little setup has allowed the animator to, to easily manipulate and twist this sphere in the viewport that was more handy uh, than if we had to use the FFD box control prompts. The, um, the yellow shapes it to control globally the, 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 the shape of the mass and the helpers to fix locally the, uh, the silhouette of the mesh. For the for the rotation of the of the sphere, we just use our wire parameters to to link the x and the y position of the global controller, the glo the blue the blue one, um, with the sphere rotation in x and y axis. And you can see when I move this controller, the sphere rotates. So when I was happy with the animation. I use this, this animated mesh to contain all my particle system. Let's go see the particle flow setup. Okay, how did I design the particle flow setup? I have already set up the scene in order to be more clear. The particle system, as you can see, is quite simple. The key points are the lock bond operator there and the physics switch or mass effect switch and a little trick with the shape facing, that we'll see later. Let's go see the particle. I had the set to be more clear and put the, this mesh transparent that you can better see the particle. First, we start by creating an empty flow in which I put uh, a birth operator. This birth operator will allow the emitter to, to generate 100 particles from frame minus 20 to frame minus 20. So, as you can see in the viewports, at the frame minus 20, all the particle will create it at the same time. Next, I use a position object in order to ensure that the particle born inside my animated mesh. 
you have to click on add and pick your mesh in uh, in the scene next you have to specify a location i choose volume to fill the volume of the mesh and check the animated surface because we have a moving object after that we have to give a shape to the particle with the shape operator you can choose between the several presets for this example i choose a simple cube from now on if i launch the playback of the shots you can see that the particle do not follow the animated mesh how to fix that for that i'm going to add a lockbound operator and if i launch the playback you can instantly see that the particles are now following the mesh the result is not so bad all my particles are moving and following the animated mesh let's go see what the lockbound operator is made of for the explanation the role of this operator is to force the particles to stay at their position while following the animation of the surface on which they are attached therefore when the animated mesh is moving you can see that the particles remain on at their position inside the mesh while being driven by the by his by his motion in uh, in the operator here i specify that the particles are attached to my animated mesh and uh, we have to click on add and pick the object in the scene next we have to click on the lock to surface and specify animated surface because here we have an object with an animated surface and not a simple moving object for for now we can let the other option options uh, as default okay the result is not so bad but if i increase the number of particles it will be more clear you can see that the particles intersect with each other this is the next step how to solve that interpenetration problem while keeping our animation for that we are going to add a dynamic collision in this particle system we start by creating a physics world this operator is going to specify that the particles of this event are now part of a dynamic world with physics simulation for this you also need to add a physics shape operator this one will establish a collision surface for each particles it can be a box a capsule a sphere or even better a convex hull convex hull will be an approximation of the particle geometry in this case we choose the spare option if you want you can check a preview of this collision surface in the viewport as a shaded geometry or wireframe so let's see what's happened to my particle what happened on frame minus 20 as you can see with dynamic on it's a bit of a mess actually the local bound operator do not do his job anymore what we need to do is maintain the particles inside the mesh while ensuring they do not intersect each other to do that we had a physics switch operator this operator allow particle flow to take into account both universe first one the motion driven by standard operator in other words kinematic and second one the motion driven by physics simulation or in other words dynamic in brief with physics switch particle flow is going to take the best part of each situation it will adjust the motion of the particle with the properties of standard operators it's quite simple to to set up we need to specify that we want to match the speed the position the rotation and the spin of all the particles we can see then that the that the particles do not interpenetrate anymore and stay attached to the animated mesh let's see from camera view i reduced the number of particles so that it is quicker to compute and launch the playback 
This is not bad and similar to the results I'm looking for. But if I change the shape of the particle from a cube to something on which we can determine its orientation, let's say uh, a little heart, we can notice that the particles are looking in every direction. This is not what we want. They are chasing Barbara. We want them to look at her. We are going to cheat a little to that. We add a shape facing operator. I turn off my heart and turn on shape facing. This operator allows to create planes that look towards the camera or an object. If I grow the size, we can notice that the particles are looking at us. Actually, I tell them to look towards an object. This object is hidden and is nothing more than a helper linked to the head of Barbara. If I look from the left view and move this helper, you can see come on, that the planes are always looking toward this object. But we do not want planes as a particle shape. The trick here is to put on top of this shape facing another shape operator. This operator will inherit the orientation property and obviously the scale of the shape facing. Put one in scale and uh, so that I have my little hearts back and they are looking in the right direction. So if I go back to the camera view and launch the animation, I can see that my particles follow the animated mesh and they look in the good direction. Great, but if I unhide my set, we can see that there is one more thing to do because my particles interpenetrate with the ground. To fix that, we call the mass effects collision operator to rescue. We tell him what are the objects that we want as deflectors. For that, we have to add on those objects a P-flow collision shape modifier that can be found in the world space modifiers category. P-flow, P-flow collision shape. In the modifier, we have to tell him how to translate the geometry for the dynamic engine. You can choose here different primitive shapes, but for a better result, you have to choose geometry. It will respect the exact topology of your object. Now click on activate and add this object on the mass effects collision deflectors list. By clicking on add and pick in the same your, your object. Up, up. It seems that we have everything well set up. I hide this animated mesh to see the, only the results of my particle. As you can see, they move without interpenetrate with the ground or each other and they follow the motion of the animated mesh. Let's see the results. This is the preview. There is around 300 particles. Now we need to replace those hearts by the dark creatures. If we have a look to the scene, with only 100 particles, this is quite slow. I need to optimize this. One solution for that is to bake the, the particles onto helpers. To bake particles, I use the pflow breaker script made by Offer Zadikover. It's very simple. You have to specify the particle system you want to bake. Here I have only one particle system, so that is already selected. Then you have to specify the range, the frame range. 
and finally you you choose what kind of result you want i don't need the particles mesh so i check helpers then we need to uncheck this this and this and we can launch the process for each particles the script will create a helper with an animation key at each frame after that we can delete the particle flow system and only keep the helpers Well, here is the result when it's done. Same simulation, but with helpers only. What is the next step? On each helper, I am going to link a low resolution mesh of a dark creature. Let's go see what she looks like. I have already set up a creature with a point cached animation cycle. This is a low version of the dark creatures. Actually, for the squad, we don't need and we don't want to have a heavy mesh. This is the same for the fur of the creatures. It is a real fur setup on the height version, but for the crowd, we decided to use a technique already used in video games that involved to transform the fur in alpha texture on planes. In the end, we have a much lighter dark creature who fit perfectly for the crowd situation. To make a difference between all the creatures, we just have to offset the animation cycle between them. These four creatures will replace the helpers thanks to a little script that I made. I call it Distributor. The script randomly copy a selection of objects onto another selection of objects. I put my four creatures in the source list and put the helpers in the destination list. I need to check instance mode and scale, rotation and position so that the creatures will take this information from the helpers. And then I click in distribution to launch the process. Now we can see that the script passed the creators on the helpers. I can hide this, 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 and oop, this. And let's see what it looks like. Here is our crowd of dark creatures, backed and point cached. And this is quicker than the particle flow system that we had before. Okay, now it seems like it's over. Let's do a recap of what we made. We attach a dynamic particle system to an animated mesh. To optimize our scene, we bake this particle system on helpers. And we replace the helpers with point cached animated low resolution dark creatures. And voila! Next step will be to put that in the lighting scene, then to add a few height resolution dark creatures in the foreground with real fur made with air farm, and of course to add Barbara. Press F9 and thank to magic. Here is the final shot. You can barely notice that we use low resolution dark creatures in the crowd. This is it. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks to everybody who work on this project and thanks Autodesk. See you.